Ariel Hawani post-fight in Orlando, Florida, alongside Malki Kawa, the manager for Alistair Overeem, who knocked out Junior Dos Santos tonight. What a win for Alistair, and the stakes were pretty high. Absolutely. He bet on himself, he rolled the dice, and now he's a free agent coming off three straight wins. Mm -hmm. Were you at all concerned that this might not be the best plan? Because let's be honest, he was an underdog. A lot of people were picking against him. You know what's the funny thing about it is that originally when the when he, it was going into his last fight of his contract, he started asking me, like, you know, um, who do you think I should fight? I said to him, well, you know, you can fight anybody in the top 10. Obviously, you're a top 10 fighter. I go, but, you know, Junior's probably coming back around December. If he doesn't get the title shot, he's the highest rated guy. Probably smart to fight him. If you plan, I mean, if you ever plan on fighting him, now would probably be the time, right? He's been laid off for a while. Now would be the time. I mean, dangerous guy, though, right? So, but if you beat him, that's the highest rated guy outside of Kane and, and Verdum, who's fighting for the belt. Going into free agency, you beat Junior De Santos, you've got to be the, the highest, most coveted heavyweight out there. And he was like, okay, and if I beat somebody else, I go, well, if you beat somebody else, coming off a win is great, but it's just not as good as fighting Junior. So he said, what do you think I should do? I think I th well, we should fight somebody other than Junior. And he goes, I don't understand. I go, well, I'd rather take the safer route. I just want to become a free agent. Right. And, you know, if we want, if that's what, because his plan was to fight his contract out and test the free agency. So for me, as a manager, the advice was, well, just win. A win is a win. And he was like, all right, let me think about it and I'll call you back. And he thought about it and he thought about it. I thought about it. And I was like, you know, I really hope he doesn't choose. Junior, because Junior's got, you know, hands that if he just touched them, I was like, you know, he could get knocked out. But it, it, it went both ways to me. It's just, you know, and I sat there and I told him, I said, look, if you confidently believe you could beat Junior, then Junior's the way to go because the highest rated guy. So the next day he called me back. He said, Let's, I'm going to fight Junior. Um, and then Ben Rothwell lost his opponent. Mm. And I called Alistair. I said, listen, I've been thinking about it. You can step up for the UFC. Ask them for fight, to fight Ben Rothwell. Um, I think it's a, probably a little bit, you know, you, it's an opportunity for you to avenge a loss. Safer fight probably for you, even though he lost already. But, you know, I kind of thought that he, you know, had a good fight with him until he got caught, right? So you could probably beat this guy. Maybe we should do that fight instead. He wanted to, but then all his coaches overrode him, said, no, stick with Junior. And so we stuck with Junior, and that's really what happened. So, I mean, to be honest with you, you know, he, he, he basically knew he was gambling with, with what it was. It was either, you know, resign off a win or resign off a loss. And then he, he gambled on himself, and he won. And now his stock is super up. I'm wondering, though, did they try to re-sign him before this fight? Because yeah. typically, as you know, one fight left, they try to lock you up. Did that happen, and why did you say no? Um, because he actually, so actually with him and Ben Henderson both, um, they wanted to start talking about, um, I'm sorry, Ben Henderson, we wanted to go in and talk a couple fights ago. They had said that they weren't interested right now to sit down and talk about it. When Ben found that out, he said, well, don't talk to me about a contract again until I'm going to fight it out. He said, I'm, I'm going to be a free agent. We'll talk contract when I'm done with my, my contract. So that's what happened with, with Ben's. With Alistair, they actually tried to redo the deal, and Alistair actually said to me, he said, hey, um, to be honest with you, I just want to wait until I'm done with the uh, – with, with this fight. Well, let me finish this fight and then we can sit down and, and, and discuss the thing. So like what he said in the press conference, mm -hmm. you know, I just focused on the fight. I didn't even think about it. So he, the minute I even brought it up to him, because um, we talked to them, we got some numbers back and forth. He's like, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to do it. I'm going to wait until I'm done. With so what do you think happens? Because let's be honest, it seems like he's had a good relationship with Scott Coker in the past. He's now the president at Bellator. Do you think he ends up back in the UFC? I, mean, I think that's going to be up to Dana and Lorenzo, to be honest with you. I you think, think they want him back. Absolutely. I, I don't see how right now you can't want Alistair back. I mean, you know, I, if you really do these rankings correctly, he's got to go from number nine to somewhere in the top five. Mm. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's at number four, maybe behind Arlovsky, mm -hmm. something to that effect, right? So maybe three, four, somewhere around there. So I don't see how he's not, you know, top three heavyweight in the world right now. You know, it's the same situation with Sterling. How do you let top five guys go? to another competing organization. So I, I just think that, you know, this is going to come down to a lot of pride and ego and money. You know, do you, do you let fighters who are out of their contracts get more money than maybe you would want to pay them? Um, or do you try to prove a point and say nobody's going to, you know, nobody's going to come in here and demand or, or ask for anything and just let them go? So it really all depends. Or does, does Bellator come in and say, hey, um, you know, they want to pay you $600,000, we will give you one point five. Right. And the UFC says, well, shit, that's way too much. I'm not, you know, I'm not matching. So you never know. I mean, you never know what this is. It's going to come down realistically to the numbers and what each guy's individual goal is. You know, every, some people, Alistair's never won a UFC belt. It's won every other belt but the UFC belt. Right. So, you know, that could play a factor. I mean, you, you never know. So you mentioned Aljamain Sterling, now a free agent as well. Another client of yours. This is a trend that's building in the sport. Where are we at with him? Sarah Kaufman, too. Oh, with Aljamain, so we, you know, we spoke. Um, Sarah Kaufman's a free agent? Yeah, that was her last fight also as well. But see, that's, this, that's the gamble you play, right? You yeah. fight out your contract. You don't necessarily like the numbers that they give you. And you lose, and now like, you know, your leverage is all totally gone. So, right. you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's just the, you know, the world we live in. And, and she, she gambled with it, and she lost tonight. But um, I think offers for Sterling? 
I know it's new, but... Well, so I just got permission to shop him around, uh, I want to say... Friday? Thursday, yeah. th Thursday or Friday. So, you know, I already put it out there. Um, every organization that I've spoken to has said they absolutely want to... Um, Offer on Aljamain, um, and I got a lot of interest from the from the from the biggest ones out there besides the UFC. Mm. When do you think this will be wrapped up? Aljamain take a while, right? Well, I know you know what to be honest with you. It all really depends because you know Sean gave me permission to go talk to other organizations, so I'm kind of technically out of the exclusive negotiation period. Okay. So now I have to go get these other offers, negotiate with these other companies, and then bring them back to the UFC. Oh, yeah, rough, okay, they are kicking us out. Very quick question before they kick us out. Benson Henderson, are you still with him? Are you negotiating? There seems to be some confusion there. Right, so here's the thing with Ben Henderson. Ben Henderson, um, so me and John Crouch had always worked Ben Henderson together, right. is what it is, and Ben and Crouch is with Ben every day. Right. So we're negotiating his contract, and we're going to finish off his contract, whether it's with the UFC or another organization, and then Crouch is going to be handling his day-to-day -day and everyday stuff like that. So we're, we're still involved in that whole mix. I mean, it'd be crazy after all the work we've done with him and all the, the different groundwork we've laid out for him to just you know walk away from the whole thing. But th what we're good at is you negotiating UFC contracts, so that's really what it is. Appreciate the time, Malki. Congratulations on a big night, and good luck with all these negotiations coming up. I appreciate it. Thank you.